Hi, this is Dan Cordopassi of TSG Multimedia. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale GP40P-2 locomotive from Athern Genesis. Southern Pacific purchased three GP40P-2s from EMD in the 1970s for use in the San Francisco to San Jose commute run. In the mid-1980s, after Caltrain took over passenger service, these locomotives were renumbered and used in freight service. My model of SP3199 represents the engine as delivered and would be most accurate for the 1970s. On weekends, these locomotives were sometimes used in freight service, so they could occasionally leave the Bay Area. Athern offers this model in all three SP numbers, 3197, 3198, and 3199. 3197 is decorated in SP's bicentennial paint scheme, while the other two are gray and scarlet. The models are available with DCC and sound installed, or in DCC ready form. The MSRP for the DCC ready version is $169.98. The MSRP for the version with DCC and Tsunami 2 sound is $269.98. My example is the DCC ready version. The gray paint on the model is thin and evenly applied. The red is thicker and there are a couple of small paint flaws, a chip on the nose and a large void at the end of the long hood on the top. The markings are crisp and all of the small warning labels and stencils are legible with magnification. There are a couple small voids in the Southern Pacific on the sides at the door panel seams, but these are hard to see. I like the subtle paint color change in the grill areas to make them appear to have more depth. One noticeable omission are the ACI labels that were present on the real 3199 in the 1970s. The cab side windows are movable, though I find that they tend to move a little too freely and don't want to stay in one position. Some of the handrail stanchions are crooked, a common problem when these parts are made of plastic. The model has a lot of visible fuel tank and piping detail which looks really good. The trucks have freestanding brake lines. The cab has a full interior. Details on the front of the model match the real 3199 pretty closely. The cab sub base has the correct SP style doors. The model has the full SP light package in front, though the red emergency light is non-functional. The class lights are also non-operating and the number boards do not light. The number boards are blank on this model. In commute service, these engines would normally carry the train number in the number boards rather than the engine number. I am assuming Atherin left these blank on purpose so that modelers can add the correct number for a particular train. The cab has the SP-style L-shaped windshield, which is accurate at least through 1976. Sometime before 1984, the L-shaped window on 3199 was replaced with two separate pieces of glass. The windshield wipers are photo-etched metal and very delicate looking. The grab irons are separately applied. The pilot has uncoupling levers and a full set of hoses, though they are mostly invisible behind the plow. The plow itself is almost correct for 3199, but the notch around the coupler box should be square and not angled as it is on the model. The vent on the top of the short hood appears to be in the wrong place. The front handrails in my model are noticeably tilted toward the rear and resist straightening. The engine has McHenry scale couplers on both ends. Both couplers are low according to the NMRA standards gauge. The rear of the model just has a headlight as per the prototype. The rear grabs are also separately applied, and the uncoupling lever and hose detail shows up better on this end. The rear class lights are also non-functional. Athern has done a good job capturing the tunnel motor style rear steps and walkway on these units. I don't have a good roof shot of 3199, but I found one of 3198 and it's pretty close to the model. The cab has the correct SP horn and bell. The AC unit has darkened grills just like the grills on the sides of the engine. There are separately applied lift rings and antenna conduits. The antenna stand has the correct antenna. The fans have photo etched grills and separate blades, though the blades on the radiator fans are recessed too far into the body. The dynamic brake fan should be raised as was common on many GP units. In the back, the steam generator details look good. The underside of the model has sanding lines which are flexible to resist breakage. The long filler pipes coming from the rear of the fuel tank are fragile and should be handled with care. All four axles are powered and all eight wheels pick up current. All of the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. The model weighs 14.8 ounces. I registered 2.2 ounces of drawbar pull on my force gauge. I'm running the model on DC. The model runs smooth and pretty quiet with good low speed capability. I'll hold the model so we can take a look at the lights. These are bulbs, not LEDs.
To disassemble the model, I had to remove the couplers and coupler boxes. This model can be converted to DCC in three ways. There's an 8-pin plug, there's a JST connector, or you can use a board-style replacement decoder and just take the whole board out, which is probably what I would do since I'll replace the lights when I'm at it. Overall, this is a really good model that should be welcomed by many diesel-era SP modelers. I remember seeing these locomotives in action on the San Francisco Peninsula, and it captures the look of the real thing very well. That said, as with many other higher-end models these days, I'm troubled by the quality control issues like the paint voids and crooked handrails. At this price, models shouldn't have those kinds of problems. I'm going to take a spike for that. I'm also going to take a spike for the coupler height. My final verdict is 8 out of 10 spikes.